Okay, and we're back with another edition of Takeover Tuesday. I am your host, Benner, and from Black Fun Distro, and welcome to the program. Welcome back. Uh, we took an extra week off there just because we had to jam pack and supersize this show because it's our special Christmas episode. Uh, we've got a very, very special guest who I'm going to talk about in a few minutes, but that's probably why you're all, all tuning in right now. Uh, but uh, listen, if you're not and you're catching this on a rebroadcast, uh, we broadcast live every two, every other Tuesday on Facebook, Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube, and then we retransmit and all the major streaming platforms, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify or wherever you pick up your favorite podcasts. So please remember to like, follow, share, and subscribe on whatever platform you're uh, listening to us on or watching us on. We appreciate the support, of course, and also all of our incredible guests that come on uh, do appreciate that support, and it does help promote uh, their, pro their their projects as well, and so we we do appreciate it. Uh, quick shout out to our sponsors, of course, uh, Wellington Breweries, Hellas Lager, Deadly Grounds Coffee, and Twisted Teas. Uh, of course, I they are not a sponsor, but I'm wearing my eyesore, if you can see it, if you're tuning in on YouTube, uh, eyesore t-shirt, uh, their video store in Toronto, um, and I just wanted to kind of preface all this by saying, uh, look, it's... Um, we're still in this pandemic. You know, we're doubling up our masks. We're tripling up our our, our vaccine shots. Uh, but small businesses really need to uh, need our support. So let's quadruple our support for them. Uh, if you are picking out Christmas gifts, doing some last minute shopping, or maybe picking out some stuff for uh, for gifts later on next year. Uh, try and hit up an independent small business. Uh, they could really, really appreciate your support. And uh, and listen, any dollars that you throw into their pocket are going to go a long way than throwing them into the pockets of maybe some larger uh, businesses. Um, so uh, make sure you take care of them. Uh, they've done a lot for the community and uh, they continue to do so. Uh, so let's make sure we do what we can uh, to support them as well. So we've got a great program for you tonight uh, as we have director, producer, Chad Archibald in the studio. Uh, he's, giving me the, he's giving me the devil horns and he's in the green room. He's ready to go. Um, but uh, look, I've known this guy for the better part of 20 years, uh, so this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I can't wait to get into some of the topics, and uh, we've got some very special announcements happening as well, um, because listen, it's Christmas, it's the giving season, and um, we're, we figured, why not give back as well uh, whenever we can? So uh, without further ado, ado uh, we're going to get to Chad in a second, but first, we got to hit the news. Okay, and we're back with another edition of the news. Uh, as you can see, I've put on my uh, smart news blazer. That means I mean business. And uh, we're going to get to uh, a bunch of things right now, but we're going to keep it short because we've got, an, like I said, Chad Archibald, we got him in the studio and got lots to talk about. So uh, let's keep this quick and let's get going. So our top story today, let me just shuffle over so that box isn't on my head. Um, holy shit, it's a Christmas miracle. Spider-Man No Way Home came out and the internet didn't spoil the movie for anyone. I can't believe it. 
uh, that's amazing uh, and spectacular and uh, whatever else uh, uh, you want to call Spider-Man. That's what this is. So I uh, hope everyone got to check it out. It was a pretty cool movie. And of course, did a $260 million haul at the domestic box office alone just for North America. That's pretty impressive. And uh, if you haven't seen it, um, no spoilers here. Uh, we don't believe in that stuff. Uh, but uh, make sure you go check it out if you're interested in it, because uh, it's definitely worth seeing on the big screen. If you feel comfortable doing that, that's great. And I'm sure it'll be on 4K and Blu-ray uh, soon enough. So uh, if you if you can't make it out to the movie theater, you can check it out on uh, on home video as well or VOD in the near future. Um, just a quick uh, update on the events. I had the privilege of going on to the walk show. Uh, here's a picture of me and these handsome fellas. Uh, we actually, it was uh, the walk show's 100th episode, invited me on as a guest, uh, as well as with uh, uh, Guelph local legend, uh, Robert Leader, uh, who runs Jam Spots and Jam School. Uh, it was really, really cool to sit down with those guys. If you want to check that out, you can do so. Uh, online you can check them out on spotify and apple uh, apple uh, uh, podcasts all the other platforms that the same same platforms that that host our show uh black Von distros takeover tuesday check out the walk show the w-o-k show um and uh it's definitely a worthwhile podcast to check out as well um uh, uh derek has a lot of uh, really cool uh, music people on there and uh it, it's really really it was really really fun uh if you wanted some insight into my brain uh go and check that out check, we talked about a whole host of things and uh it was a really really fun time so uh shout out to walk thanks for having me on and uh, appreciate the uh, appreciate the opportunity to come on and uh promote our stuff as well. So thank you. Uh, now moving right along a uh, quick update on a physical media product. Uh, we love doing these because I love physical media and everyone here at black Von distro loves physical media as well. Uh, but this week it is the, uh, American psycho, uh, make sure they don't get too much glare here. The American psycho Lionsgate steelbook edition. This is the 4k, uh, release of, um, of American Psycho, amazing film. Of, of course, I had a Canadian director on the show tonight, so I figured, hey, why not focus another movie that was made by a Canadian director as well? This has got a really cool slip case. Of course, it pops off here. And of course, my personal favorite, actually pretty cool back here as well, is the really, really cool, if you can see that here, the business card, Patrick Bateman's business card in the side there, inside the case there, a really, really nice touch. Um, of course, that is a uh, bone uh, with the typeface uh, Cillian Rail, um, if anyone's interested. Uh, but American Psycho, uh, 4K release on Steelbook. Um, I think, I can't remember if this is from the States or not. Um, but anyway, if you see it online, uh, check it out from Lionsgate. They did a really, really cool job on this. And uh, it's going into my collection, uh, no problem. And uh, it's a great addition to anyone else's as well. So uh, moving right along, uh, of course, we need to get to our fried chicken sandwich report. That's where uh, I take uh, taste a, a go and eat a fried chicken sandwich and tell you how good it is. Um, and this week we went to, uh, this was actually a recommendation from uh, the, um, let me see here. I don't want to uh, screw this up. Uh, OHFP uh, listeners of the show, uh, hopefully they're tuning in tonight, but uh, they recommended me go and check out this place or do a review on this place. And that is Coco's chicken in downtown Guelph. Here's a photo of me eating that said sandwich. Uh, and look, uh, I've had Coco chicken before. Uh, I, these guys actually, uh, OHFP actually told me to go and see this place. They were like, if you like fried chicken, you gotta go to Coco's. They told me that maybe about like two years ago, I've been going ever since, but they also told me, Hey, listen, you got to do a review on these guys. They're a small business and they could definitely reuse the support. Um, this sandwich is amazing. I'm giving it a four and a half out of five it is now the top rated chicken sandwich or fried chicken sandwich that we've tried on the program. Uh, it's amazing. It's got, uh, it's huge. It's a two hander sandwich. If you try and pick it up with one hand, it falls apart chicken everywhere uh, i got the sweet and spicy uh sauce on it uh regular coleslaw comes with cheese it's delicious and the value is pretty good too so massive size of a chicken sandwich uh it's got a decent value i think it was about nine ten bucks and uh, of course the flavor was amazing so korean barbecue joint in downtown guelph coco chicken make sure you check them out and of course let's take a look at our updated standings provided by obviously our awesome graphics guy mitch uh he's thrown this together here's a top 10 listing of the fried chicken sandwich report of course coco's chicken fried chicken sandwich at number one with four and a half out of five and zinger chick again another small uh business family run restaurant uh zinger chick with a zinger burger coming in at four out of five and of uh, as you can see on our top 10 list no longer includes tim hortons sorry tim hortons you just didn't make the cut so uh thanks again for uh, uh for if you have a have an inkling for a chicken sandwich i'm telling you coco's downtown guelph now uh 
keeping this short and sweet, let's move on. Uh, we've got a great guest tonight. Um, he's been kind of he supplied us with a whole bunch of photos. And uh, here's another one with him and his Rotten Tomatoes trophy. Uh, it's Chad Archibald, producer and director of, uh, uh, sorry, director of such hits as um, Bite, I'll Take Your Dead, and The Heretics. And uh, of course, He's also produced uh, recent films such as Vicious Fun and The Oak Room. Uh, of course, uh, he's become a recognizable talent within the horror community uh, in Canada as well as beyond. And uh, he's also the co-owner of Black Fawn Distribution. So, and we'll talk about how the two two companies are different and how they interact with one another uh, during this episode, of course. And since it's the holiday season, of course, we've got some very special announcements regarding both companies, and we'll be able to tell you those tell you about those in just a little bit. So award winning, critically acclaimed. He's the head cheese around these parts. He's also my direct boss. Uh, but also, I assure you, our dedicated listeners out there, if you're listening, I will not. I will not. Uh, I sorry. I will keep my journalistic integrity, and I will pull no punches. And we'll get down and dirty with all things horror. So to kick things off, I figured, hey, why not take a small step back in time um, to uh, take a look at a, a, a classic Black Fawn trailer. Uh, this is the trailer for Bite. It's currently creeping up to 1.6 million views on YouTube, which is a, an amazing accomplishment. And of course, uh, I'm talking about uh, this is a crazy body horror movie. You should check it out. It's got a cool uh, story behind it as well with its world premiere, which we're going to get to. And uh, yeah, this is Bite. Uh, but listen, we've got director, producer, and all around good guy, Chad Archibald, live on the other side. And we're going to get to chatting with him right after this. <laughs> You all right? Oh, something bit me. Aww, are you okay? Yeah, it's just a little bite. Hey, have you been sick at all since our trip? I'm fine. It's just a small bug bite. Well, it looks infected. I need to speak to a doctor as soon as possible. <laughs> I stopped by her apartment yesterday. I smelled something coming from inside. Okay, so you're scaring me. But what happened? She's a monster. Who is? Okay. It's really not that bad. Okay, and we're back. Chad Archibald, my good friend, my long, my long lost brother. Uh, welcome to the program, man. Thanks for joining us. Um, I hope you hope you dug us choosing a classic, uh, a classic trailer to show you. And uh, again, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. All that fun stuff. Um, and also, uh, happy holidays to your dog. <laughs> it's downstairs. He's excited as well. Uh, yeah, no, I'm happy to be here. It's uh, fun to do this Takeover Tuesday. I, I, I'll be honest. I watch every week, but mostly because I got to keep an eye on you. But yeah. also, I'm a big fan <laughs> of a lot of the people on this show. Um, having worked with a bunch or, um, you know, people that uh, communally through a horror network um, are just uh, just great people. Great people with great stories. So it's awesome. uh, pretty awesome kind of, and I will give you credit because you really have been the one to build this from an idea that was something very, very simple uh, at the start of the pandemic of, you know, how can we still interact with people and still be social, um, but from the safety of our own home. So good on you, man. Oh, thanks, man. Well, you know what? It's actually been pretty fun too. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it does take some work, of course, uh, anyone who kind of gets in on this. Uh, I mean, I, I, to be honest, like I was just on, on the walk show and, uh, we were talking kind of off camera and I said, um, you know, uh, I thought this is going to be a lot easier and it's, it's, it's fairly easy once you get going, but there's still a lot of work, a lot of prep to go into it, but it's also worth it. Um, talking to a whole bunch of people out there and the guests that come on as well as the fans and quick shout out to the fans out there. Uh, anyone who's listening or watching right now, if you're watching live on uh, Facebook, uh, Twitch, Twitter, or YouTube, uh, feel free to leave a comment down below in the comment section and we'll try and throw it up on the screen, uh, throughout the broadcast. This is kind of a supersized episode. We're kind of not locking it down on the one hour. Uh, we're just going to see how it goes, but we're going to try not to bore anyone to death. But if you got a question for Chad or myself or the company or whatever, uh, feel, feel free to throw it down 
throw it down. Sorry, I can't even talk tonight. Uh, throw it down in the comments section and we'll try and get to it throughout the broadcast. But uh, look, um, you've got uh, just a quick background on you. Uh, your director of, you know, I'll take your dad, the heretics bite. Um, and, uh, and also look, you've, you've, the last couple of years have been tough for everyone, especially people in the film and entertainment business. What have you guys been uh, cooking up uh, at Black Fawn Films over the last year or so um, uh, since this kind of all locked us down? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, it was strange, like it was for everyone, for sure. But uh, we did a movie called The Oak Room in 2019 uh, over the winter and then went on and did a movie called Vicious Fun uh, in the... I guess it was, yeah, the winter, right, and I think it was December, actually, of 2019. So uh, right after we were done that, um, we uh, had some really exciting news. Uh, I think it was announced in February. We signed a four-picture deal with uh, Warner Media and Turner Latin America uh, to develop four films and, and make it with that team. And we were very excited, but also, you know, a little scared because we had been working so hard in developing and making um, the Oak Room and Vicious Fun that we really, like, we didn't even know what projects we were going to do. Um, but, you know, a big part of what me and uh, Cody Callahan, the other owner of Black Fawn Films, uh, does is we develop films. We develop stories. Uh, that's what we do pretty much every day is read scripts and work with filmmakers and work with writers um, to develop content that um, we can either produce or direct, um, just stories that we want to tell to the world. So uh, the pandemic hit. Uh, and you know, it wasn't a good thing by any means, but timing wise, uh, we were just going into development anyway. So, uh, we made a conscious decision to kind of go into post with, uh, vicious fun and get that done. But, uh, you know, even, even with that, it was like, you know, color correction, all those things. It was like, you know, we had to do a lot of it, um, virtually, uh, which is a, a really huge learning curve for us for sure. Um, and then on top of it, we had Oak Room and, Vicious Fun, both going into festivals during uh, the pandemic. So uh, we were really excited because we were going to, you know, tour the world with these films. And uh, we were really pumped to just, you know, see what audiences think. You know, a big part of, of, of us making movies, something that we always just truly love is is going to, you know, like the world premiere with the cast and crew and, um, you know, getting to sit in a theater and eat popcorn and see how an audience reacts, see when they jump, see when they laugh all that stuff. So it was, uh, it was pretty hard for us, for sure. We had uh, uh, the Oak Room uh, had its world premiere at Fantasia and won the gold award for best Canadian feature there. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was, you know, a huge award for us. We were so happy. Um, but again, you know, it was something that we, you know, we, we found out, you know, while sitting at home and, you know, it, it's definitely different than, you know, when you're there and you get the award, you get to go up and, you know, kind of celebrate with the whole cast and crew. So um, as happy as we were with that, um, it was uh, it was definitely difficult. And then uh, we had Vicious Fun and it opened up Sitches in Spain. And again, it was so much fun. It was so exciting leading up to it. And then, you know, as it premiered, we just kind of like we couldn't even actually watch it. We just kind of sat around and waited for it to be over and then did a Q&A after um, through our computers. But um, that being said, you know, we spent a lot of time doing interviews and press for the films, um, just trying to kind of get them out there uh, because it's a it's definitely a different world marketing a film when you can't go to festivals and kind of be on the ground. Uh, so that's a big part of what we did in to in 2020 and then on top of that we just have been working with the warner media team um to develop these uh four films that we had slated um and we basically had development calls every two weeks with their team from argentina and la and uh went back and forth about concepts and basically built these these four scripts from from almost a treatment stage up the majority of them um, and uh, really got to work with a, a really advanced experienced team from a studio, which was a uh, first time for us. So, and it was, it was amazing. You know, we definitely went into this kind of a little concern that, you know, as indie filmmakers hear about like, you know, studio execs and things like that coming in and like, you know, screwing with the story that you want to tell, but truly the team um, at Turner were so, uh, they're so talented, so uh, 
you know, just, just such great storytellers. Uh, we really learned a lot from working with them and we've, uh, we've developed a great relationship. And I think our four films have basically turned into an, an ongoing slate um, that we're, uh, we're working with them. So um, we developed these four films and then went out and uh, raised funding for them. So our slate for 2022 is, is finally when we go back to camera uh, in probably February, March uh, is doing these four films basically back to back throughout the summer. Right on. And, and so, and so, yeah, so you're shooting, your plan is to shoot four films next year. Is that the plan? That's the plan. Yeah. Wow. So ideally we go back to basically back to back, you know, for us, it's something that we've never done before. We've, I think we've shot three films in a year, um, but all, you know, bare bones with us, you know, just doing everything ourselves. These, um, these films have, you know, bigger budgets with them. Um, they're a lot more elaborate. Uh, one of them specifically is just, it's, uh, it's huge. It's, we don't even know how we're going to do it yet, but we love it. We love the script and we'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you which movie that is. Cause I know you won't tell me, but, uh, um, <laughs> I know, I think I speak for everyone saying that, that, you know, we're, we're pretty excited to see what happens with that because the, the Warner team was the same team that you worked, you guys worked with to develop vicious fun and bring that to, uh, that to across the finish line basically. And, uh, which for anyone who's interested in watching that, uh, we've got some news about that, but it's also streaming on shutter as well. So, so right now, so if you, uh, if you're looking for something to watch tonight or, you know, during the holidays, vicious fun is on shutter as well, uh, in Canada, as well as the U S UK and Australia. And New Zealand, I believe. So, um, but uh, that was the same team, though, that you guys kind of partnered up with. That was kind of the start of that relationship. Yeah. So basically, we did a movie called "I'll Take Your Dead" years ago, and um, and ended, ended up selling it to this team. Um, they really liked it, and then kind of put us on their radar. Um, so we ended up going to them with a script that we had been developing called "Vicious Fun," uh, and they loved it right away. So they agreed to come on board with that. Um, and I think it was, you know, two weeks into filming, we were sending our dailies to them and, you know, before the end of the shoot, they were already, they were, they loved it so much that they were like, all right, let's sign something. Let's, you know, bring these guys onto the slate. Um, they were doing a, a 90 film slate. So, you know, be, I think between 10 companies or something like that, like between us and I think Mar Vista and Blumhouse and a bunch of different, uh, companies kind of developing a bunch of genre films. So. We were probably the smallest ones to come on board with it, but uh, we've had a great relationship with them and, and we've really created some some content that we're really proud of. Awesome. Uh, now, listen, uh, before we, we go, lots to talk about tonight, but I just I wanted to jump in on some comments here because it's the Christmas season. I didn't want any of our listeners who have been kind of listening to the program throughout the year, um, which we really appreciate that. So I'm going to throw a whole bunch of comments uh, up on the uh, up on the screen just to get things going. Uh, we've got uh, local Christopher Mink saying awesome. Uh, we've got Jesse Hobson saying Black Fawn doing big things. Thanks a lot, Jesse. Appreciate it. Uh, uh, our good bud. Maybe we'll talk about this later. We'll see. Uh, Jess Kong's Guns and Benners. Uh, <laughs> Uh, amazing and chad's and selby's i guess but uh <laughs> but uh jess we were just talking about that the other night actually um so uh yeah maybe we'll get to that uh also um there's a we've got a bunch of likes and a bunch of hearts for the broadcast and we've got one angry face already uh in the first uh you know the first 15 20 minutes probably oh. something i said about tim hortons i don't know but then i just saw this <laughs> po just this comment from john a long time listener sorry my kid grab grab the phone i'm just gonna assume it's that and not my not my comments about Hamilton's favorite beverage, but uh, um, Courtney Krista piping in. You got to check out Tall Tree in Hamilton for fried chicken Sammies. Okay, we'll put it on the list. I'll um, second that. Okay, so uh, we are we are going going around different places. If we've got a recommendation, as long as it's kind of not in you know Antarctica, uh, we'll try and get there and we'll try and review this chicken sandwich for the chicken sandwich re report because one, it's just a fun thing to do, and B, I just love eating chicken fried chicken sandwiches. It's like my new thing that I developed during the pandemic. So, uh, quick uh, quick comment from Alexander Classic Heart. Thank you, man. Uh, and then we've got. Uh, yeah, well, just a quick question. This is excellent. Bite turned me on to Black Fawn Films, and I've never looked back. Cheers from Loco in Australia. So tuning in all the way from Australia. Thanks so much. Um, let's see. Uh, our good friend Daryl from Twisted Tees. Yo. <laughs> Yo, Daryl. And a quick <laughs> love you guys. Apparently that needed two comments to put up on screen. Uh, Daryl's, of course, the the owner-proprietor of um, 
uh, both Twisted Teas and Salem Frights. Uh, if you haven't heard of them, uh, go check them out. Both uh, Salem Frights is an event that we just covered and we just went to. Uh, super, super awesome. And he also designs all of our merch, uh, which is fantastic. And uh, yeah, and hey, look, uh, we've got, and you know, last but not least, our last guest that we had on the program, uh, the immortal Jason Rockman saying uh, legendary Canadian filmmaker. Uh, thanks, Jason. I appreciate the good, com- the, the, the fine comments about myself. Uh, if you have anything for chat, please let them know, okay? Um, but- uh, Love you, Jason. <laughs> oh, and sorry, one last thing, one last thing coming in uh, from Alexander as well. Uh, Ari Millen's dance sequence alone sells vicious fun, uh, which <laughs> yes, we couldn't agree more. Uh, we love Ari and he is uh, an absolute maniac in that movie in, in all good way, in, in all good ways. Um, but uh, yeah, let's, let's, um, uh, if you got more comments, keep throwing them down below guys. We'll, we'll try and throw them up, uh, mm-hmm. of course, uh, during the broadcast and during the, uh, during the, during the program. Uh, but uh, listen, let's talk, let's pivot a little bit because um I think what we we still have to talk about um, Black Fawn distribution and Black Fawn Films, and I think a lot of people understand now that Black Fawn Films is the production house. That's your that's that's owned by yourself and Cody Callahan. Uh, so that's the production house of things, and then the sister company is Black Fawn Distribution, which you yourself also uh, work with for own uh, along with myself and the other guys. Um, but uh, can you discuss how the just real quick, like how the two companies interact and how closely they, they work together? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's uh, it's funny because we started making movies and we started we started Black Font Films, and it grew into this company that basically started as you know us making movies in our backyard. And you know, Ben was around at that time. It was he uh, was uh, running a record label called Year of the Sun Records. That's and, me for everyone who wants to know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and yeah, for years, you know, we just kind of did our own thing in our own backyard, uh, made movies, and then you know sold them out to the world or someone would go out to the world and sell them but we were really just interested in making movies um eventually we eventually we slowly learned how the industry worked and um became aware of you know the distribution world Uh, and the film distribution world is a dangerous place i think for indie filmmakers because um there really is a, a lot of vultures out there who will just take your film and make as much money as they can off of it and really never get back to the filmmaker um, or give the filmmaker such a small portion. So we really realized that, um, you know, the filmmakers were at the bottom of the totem pole, which, you know, seems so insane of a concept. Um, so, and which we were as well. Um, so we decided uh, we had a movie called If a Tree Falls. And we were like, why, why don't we just go out and, start our own distribution company and Benner at that point, you know, knew had some contacts in distribution through his uh, music label that he had done. Uh, so we all got together and said, screw it. Why don't we just, you know, put out this movie on our own and we'll see what happens. You know, we'll see if it works or not. Um, and we did it and we loved doing it. And we had started going to conventions and we started promoting the film our own way and, you know, being kind of in control of the movie's destiny and kind of giving it the love that it really deserved. And it's like, we still like, you know, we were still pushing that movie almost, I don't know, 12 years later or something like that. Um, I'm still, been, I'm, I'm still pushing the movie by the way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas like, you know, you give it to a distributor who doesn't really care, you know, they push it for 45 days and then it disappears yeah. and you never see it again. Um, and it's very hard to get your film back after that. So that's, uh, that's why we originally started the, the, uh, Black Fund distribution. And it's kind of grown into this thing that's, you know, even more than a distribution company. It's, you know, we, I don't know, we promote each other, we promote each other's film uh, companies, we promote the horror genre, the horror community. Uh, It's something that, you know, I know us, our whole team is really, really proud of, but uh, sorry, just to to clarify it though, Black Fun Films makes movies. Me and Cody are out there kind of uh, developing projects, making films. Black Fun Distribution is completely separate and it releases films and it releases films that, um, that we just really love um, you know, of filmmakers that we really respect and, and some movies that we just um, really want to help kind of get out there to the world. Um, but the thing that a lot of people don't realize is that, you know, the two companies are at different levels for sure. And it's it's often very, very hard for Black Fund Distribution to get rights for a Black Fund Films movie because there's so many people involved that it doesn't always work out that way, you know. Yeah. Um, so whenever we can collaborate together and we can release, you know, one of the black Fun films movies through black Fun distribution, it's always something really, really special and we're excited to do it. And we put our whole heart into it and, you know, we get to again, control our film's own destiny. Um, but you know, it's definitely a challenge for us to kind of make all the stars align to make those things happen. But 
they're uh, they're two definitely separate separate entities, but uh, a lot of the same peeps work together on on both pride on both sides. Now uh, that's a great segue because um, we've got a special announcement that we kind of we kind of told people at, at Blood in the Snow Film Festival, but we haven't really announced it kind of in a live setting. So we thought it'd be really really cool to do it today. And also, I think uh, hold on a second. I think I got. Oh wait, who's, who's that? Oh my goodness, it's <laughs> it's it's this. Who is this? It's Evan Marsh. Holy jump. Evan, Evan Marsh. Marsh. This is fun. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> How you doing, man? I, I'm sorry I knocked. I didn't mean to interrupt with my knock. <laughs> no, no. Come on in. Come on what in. What are you doing here, man? <laughs> How you doing, guys? It was great. Great listening to you. Even as I was waiting there, I was like really, really interested. I'm like, okay, so distribution is its own thing. I'm learning. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, Evan, uh, thanks, thanks, thanks for popping in. Uh, we wanted to have you on because uh, the the news that we wanted to to announce. Uh, who wants to go? I think I feel like one of you guys should announce it. Um, Chad, you want to go ahead? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, the people at Shutter and RLJE were uh, generous enough, I guess, to work with us and and kind of heard our pitch and our passion on how um, we wanted to release the film up here in Canada, and uh, they decided to carve out the blu-ray here in canada for black fawn distribution so in q2 i believe um we're going to be releasing the blu-ray maybe dvd blu-ray combo i don't know yet um of vicious fun here in canada it's going to have tons of special features on it uh we've been working on them already it's got bloopers it's got deleted scenes it's got all the stuff that we always talk about during q and a's that uh that people haven't been able to see in the actual film there's just there's so much ad-libbing and so much um good times on set that uh that kind of we had to cut out of the film just for timing so now that it's all together um you know we we have a place to kind of put it all and we were able to kind of you know work with their team down there to um to create something really special so that's even for you evan i don't know i know you haven't actually seen it yet i, I don't think but the but blue are hilarious but I'm, I'm gonna say that i from experiencing what it was like on that set i'm probably more excited than anybody to watch those special features and just live through it again because it was by far by far the most fun i've ever had on set like just the ad libs and the amount of bloopers and stuff it was i'm i'm so excited to see it and who, do you, uh, who do you uh who do you remember doing ad libbing the most with bowman like like the uh, like like it, uh christopher bowman for everyone sorry it, he played one of the cops and it was that he was the cop that was interrogating me and just really had a problem with joel <laughs> and and there is there's there's gotta so much of that stuff has had to have hit the cutting room floor as yeah. it usually does but there, we were just riffing in it that's what i live for but it's literally those moments on set that i live for yeah uh, and we they're can, in there they're in there <laughs> yeah we, we we uh we've got a we've got some got some gold i think uh of course we reached out to um um the editor uh mike Gallant, of course uh friend of the program and great great yep. friend of ours and uh he's he's kind of he's swooped through a few things there, there's some there's definitely some some funny comedic gold uh so i can't wait for you to see it of course and uh so vicious fun dropping on black fun distro across canada uh in probably q2 2022 uh special features um commentaries blooper reels uh deleted extended scenes Evan, while we have you, uh, I know you're only here for a few minutes because I know you got a jet, but um, but just can you talk about like what the filmmaking experience was with the Black Fawn crew and, and working with Chad and Cody on Vicious Fun? Chad and Cody was weird because Cody was the director, but it but it was so like they worked with each other so well that I never felt like I was stepping on anyone's toes if I had a question for Chad or anything like that. And they were just so smooth. The, the whole operation, it was like sometimes won't name any. Uh, productions or anything but it's like it's getting in the way of the actual performing on the day or getting it like any, anything else is and they just ran so smooth together and and they just always knew what each other was thinking and where they wanted to go with it and had such a clear vision that it just made for all the actors on set it made it so fun and so easy and it's just like i i, can, I hope to work with them again honestly because it's just like it's a dream <clears throat> so is that just your way of of, of politely saying make a vicious fun too or or what listen we're gonna listen to you guys we're gonna listen to the viewers because there's a lot of push i'll, I'll say that that's what i'll say so it's out of my hands but i know that there is a strong push and we left it in an interesting way so we will see chad any comments uh any comment to that or is it a no comment from yourself no i mean yeah it's up to up to the viewers out there 
you know, go watch Shutter, uh, post in their comment section, let everyone know that you want a sequel, and we'll see if uh, we'll see if we can get uh, codes and the the writing team to to get on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we'll we'll give them a, we'll give them a poke. Yeah. Uh, but I'm no, that's my ass for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Yeah, yeah, I know everyone thought they had the holidays off, right? <laughs> uh, well, listen, um, so well, thanks everyone for uh, uh, Evan, thank you so much for, for popping by. I really, really appreciate uh, you making the time, uh, and of course, Vicious Fun dropping on Black Fun Distro uh, in 2022. It's our first announcement tonight, maybe not our last, and potentially maybe not our last special guest that might be swinging in to oh. take over Tuesday Studio. So, and that's just a hook to keep Evan watching so yeah. he doesn't just log off canceling all my other things okay yeah. hold on is he bigger than me <laughs> why did i come on first yeah <laughs> well we wanted to lead with you man you i, I felt yeah. like uh you know we just had the we just had the uh, chad was just talking about um having the, the film play never being able to really play in a theater where we could sit and watch it and uh having that amazing um screening at blood in the snow film festival uh big shout out to kelly michael stewart and his team over there um for letting us do that because it was just it was great to, to see everyone's reaction to all the funny parts. And yeah. it like, like it, it was just, a, it was, it was just great to have that moment, especially in the hometown. Right. So. Yeah. I think w one of the, one of the hits to this movie, obviously to any movie really coming out around the pandemic, but it's that kind of film that I think the more people you watch it with, the more you enjoy it. And not, not that you can enjoy it just on your own, but like I, from hearing uh, as it's having its uh, screenings, and hearing the audience reaction like I've, i'm sure you guys have had the same thing where if something might have went over your head a little bit but everyone else found it really funny and you're like you're like right in it too and i just think that's what vicious fun does so well like when you're just actually you know butts and seats and, and watching the uh screenings yeah absolutely well uh listen um uh evan thanks again for for making the time we're gonna let you go but uh chad you're gonna stick around for some more uh for some more uh, uh torture and punishment right <laughs> absolutely Good okay to see well you, evan. you too chad better better <laughs> Take care. And uh, let's um, let's jump in with uh, uh, let's just you know what, while we're talking about vicious fun, let's uh, let's throw up the trailer and uh, check it out. And we'll be, we'll be right back right after Love this. It. Need a ride as far as I can. Pop it. This is what you said to me. A group of serial killers attending a 12-step meeting tried to kill me and my accomplice before disappearing, leaving us with three dead bodies? No, two dead bodies. It's one word, right? Bullshit. Um, sorry to interrupt your meeting. Thanks so much for coming out. How do you maintain your lifestyle and keep your urges under control? I murdered the same victim repeatedly. Just give me a mess. Have you ever gotten into a kidney? What is this, some kind of support group for serial killers? Why are you here? It's complicated. I thought you had our little group sessions on lockdown. Are you a uh, skinner? A slicer dicer or a uh, corpse humper? How did you get in here? I got, I got drunk at the bar. I passed out in a closet for a few hours, okay? 911. Yes. Oh my God, it's horrible. Now, Bonnie told me that people are coming here to try and kill him. It may be us. What? Us? Why? <laughs> Don't eat. Quarter! It got really messy. I like it messy sometimes. <laughs> I'm smack in the face. I'm like a coiled snake. Gentlemen, we are about to have a lot of fun tonight. Hey, I didn't even gag. All right, and we're back with uh, Chad Archibald from Black Fawn Films and Black Fawn Distribution. And uh, again, big thanks to Evan Marsh for dropping by. Uh, that was the trailer for Vicious Fun, which, if you just missed the announcement, is coming on Blu-ray to Canada to from from Black Fawn Distribution. It'll be released in early 2022. But also, hey, if you're not a big fan of physical media, you can always catch the film on Shutter. It's streaming now in across Canada, the U.S., Australia, New Zealand, 
in the United Kingdom, uh, Vicious Fun from Shudder, uh, as well as from Black Fun Films. We're really pumped to put that out. Uh, how does that feel to, to know that that's kind of getting a physical release, Jed? It's exciting, for sure. I mean, the whole movie takes place in the 80s. The whole movie is about, like, 80s culture. And, uh, you know, we we love making it because we were kids of the 80s. You know, we, we got to kind of critique it from memory. Um, and, I, I mean, the fact that it's it's getting a Blu-ray, uh, especially nowadays, because it's very, very hard to actually, a lot of companies aren't putting things out in physical media right now because a lot of stores are closed down during the pandemic. Um, but it's something that, you know, is special to us for sure and uh, special to Shutter and the RLJE team as well. Um, so, I mean, the fact that we get to kind of help put it all together and kind of, you know, really craft it to what it needs to be uh, in our eyes is, uh, is special for us for sure. I think, uh, and I think, you know, we've, we've obviously, cause we work for a di distribution company together. Um, we've had a lot of, especially, and the other guys, our other partners as well, had a lot of conversations about, you know, physical's dead or digital's the future, or it does one outweigh the other. And I think kind of, you know, where we've sort of landed on this stuff is that one doesn't necessarily cannibalize the other. I think there's people out there that really enjoy streaming services and, and maybe don't have enough room to store a physical media collection. And there's all the, there's a whole other uh, uh, slot of people that that really do like collecting physical media and having that movie on the shelf. And I think that's something that, at least for me, um, through the pandemic, I thought I saw more of that. I thought I saw more people streaming and then other people kind of collecting and and kind of because you can't go to stores, you got to order a lot of stuff online. So I'm excited to put this movie out. Uh, I can say that we've had a kind of a sneak peek. Again, shout out to Mike Gallant. Thanks a lot for your, for all your help with this stuff. But we've had a kind of a sneak peek at some of the special features, and they, like I mentioned before the uh, uh, before the trailer, uh, they are gold. They're fun. I and literally watched it like 10 minutes before I came on here. Who said, uh, someone said, someone's commented on this. Someone said, um, love the, uh, love the dance sequence with Ari. So Bob, Bob Neese mm -hmm. from Vicious Fun. Uh, he, yes, he has a dance sequence in the movie. Um, I can't remember who said that. So I apologize for not remembering that, but listen, you're going to want to check out the special features. There might be some sort of extended scene involving Ari Millen and some dancing. So you want to see uh, some more, more Bob dance moves. Bob dance moves are yeah. the best. Um, now, <laughs> listen, before like talking about the eighties and stuff like that, uh, I mean, we're both, you know, kids of the eighties grew up in the eighties as kids sort of went through the nineties as like, you know, teenagers. Um, what kind of originally drew you to horror films? And, you know, obviously you started making them cause you're like, let's make a movie, but what kind of drives you to make more um, consistently uh, over the years and stuff? Because if it wasn't for the pandemic, you guys would have shot, like probably two or three movies last year anyway, and some more this year. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we, um, I've been making horror movies for I don't know, more than half my life now, I guess. But uh, even well before that, I mean, I was always a horror movie fan. Um, I don't know what it was that started it. You know, I, I don't know. I feel like a lot of kids from the eighties have that same story of like, you know, they saw a horror film, they got a hold of a VHS and they watched something that was just like different and scary and kind of like, you know, got their blood pumping. Um, and yeah, it was something that I, I loved as a, as a kid and, you know, my, my family, my, I think my mom was kind of just like, well, it keeps them quiet and whatever, you know, like just sit them in a room and put a scary movie on. Uh, you know, I definitely got to go to the, the corner store with like, you know, my mom phoning in and saying, it's okay. He's just renting a movie for me and, you know, going and picking whatever I wanted from the, uh, you know, restricted horror section. So God, the best was, mom, the best mom, like I the know. best parent, <laughs> everyone wants a parent like that. Can, can, yeah. you know, can, can so-and-so's mom call down? Oh, amazing. It's like <laughs> a jail, remember, you know, jail I, free card, right? Yeah. And I remember having nightmares for sure. I'd have nightmares of Freddy Krueger. I'd be hiding in like the clothes hamper and he's coming into the room going, I'd wake up, I'd be terrified, but I would never tell my parents because I know as soon as you tell them, no horror movies. So no horror movies. it's, uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, it was something that, um, you know, it's not like I grew up being like, I want to be a filmmaker. You know, I think in the eighties, um, uh, it, it's a lot different than it is now. I feel like anyone can be a filmmaker now. Whereas in the eighties, it was like, you know, things were shot on film and they, you know, they were bigger budget and, you know, it was a lot harder to kind of get into the industry. Um, it kind of went from, you're not in the industry to like, you know, you're doing million dollar films or something. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, it, it's funny. It was just on a whim that me and a, a buddy, uh, Phil Carrer, Gabriel Carrer, who uh, did For the Sake of Vicious and The Demolisher, If a Tree Falls, uh, we were best buds. And um, yeah, one day we just decided to go out and, and buy a book called Screenwriter, Screenwriting for Dummies. 
Uh, this was before the internet was really around. And yeah, we just read it and uh, wrote a script and went out and shot a movie. We just, you know, put, put two cameras on a credit card and uh, went out and just uh, started making every mistake that we could until, you know, we had something put together. And our first film was called Desperate Souls, which is, you know, in my eyes, almost unwatchable. But it's still, uh, back then, you know, it was a different world and we sold it to Lionsgate and Alliance Atlantis. It was in every video store across Canada. Like I, I remember going to the video store, going to Blockbuster and seeing a movie that I made in our backyard and being like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> this is amazing. So <laughs> then we just, uh, we kept doing them. I mean, as far as making horror movies, I just think that there's so much fun. You know, there's, there's so much fun to, um, to do the gags, to, to have the challenges. Um, you know, I, I think a big part of it is, is, you know, your challenge to create characters that you care about so that when they get scared, you get scared, you know? And I think that's just, you know, one of the great challenges with making horror films is that, you know, you have to create something that, that means something, you know, you have to make, you know, characters that, that you care about and then you get to torment them and uh, torment the audience. So it's uh yeah, I mean, it's something really, really special seeing an audience react to to a scary scene or something, uh, you know, especially, you know, when we did the movie Bite, it was, you know, one of the first times that I got to sit in a theater at a, you know, real festival with a, a horror film that I was, uh, that I had directed that, and then seeing people react, you know, um, and ever since then, it's just, you know, it's just so much fun. Also developing horror films, like a big part of what we do is just, is just writing and talking to writers and filmmakers about story. Um, and with horror movies, you can do whatever you want. Like you can literally come up with anything in the world, any, it doesn't matter how ridiculous it is. And sometimes the more ri ridiculous it is, the better. Uh, and you get to kind of shape that into a story. And then you read a script that's, ridiculous even like vicious fun and it you know it just seems so wacky and like in a, almost a different world and then you get to go out and make it and actually see it kind of come to life you know it's something that uh is really awesome and i mean as much as i love horror movies we also you know me and cody we both love other genres as well you know some of the films that we're doing on this new slate aren't necessarily horror films you know we still say mm -hmm. that they're kind of genre films even the oak room you know was more of a mystery drama but it's still you know, it still had an edge to it, you know? And, yeah. uh, you know, even with any of our films, it's like, we always say, you know, you should be able to take all the horror out of it and still have an engaging story. So, um, you know, first and foremost, we love making movies. We love telling stories. Second on top of it, you know, just love making horror stories. So let's talk about a little bit about bite because we just, we played the trailer at the start of the program. And, uh, I know there's a lot of fans out there. Um, you just mentioned having its world premiere sitting in the audience, but, uh, bite gained some serious infamy online, uh, after its world premiere, which was at the amazing, uh, fantastic uh, Fantasia Film Festival. Shout out to Mitch uh, in Montreal, of course. Um, what the hell went down? You want to comment on this? Because I think it's, I think it's a hilarious story and also like a really, really cool um, um, explanation. Um, but at the same time as well, like that movie consistently ends up on, on, you know, the grossest horror movie lists. I mean, Looper always includes it. Uh, it's all over uh, the internet still, even years later. And as I mentioned, coming up to on 1.6 million views on the trailer alone, um, care to comment let's yeah. get into it <laughs> yeah i mean we uh we had signed a, a eight picture deal with a company called breakthrough entertainment that we still work with today um and we you know they loved the stuff that we had done in the past and you know again we came on we had no scripts or anything like that they just loved the content that we were creating so we went out and started writing and um came up with this idea uh about a girl who goes on a bachelorette party and gets bit by a bug um, and whenever she comes home, uh, she starts turning into an insect. Um, she was also afraid of having kids. It was something that was a big challenge in her life that she was struggling with, with her and her fiance. Um, but in the end she ends up, you know, spawning hundreds of thousands of eggs and, and basically having that kind of, uh, <clears throat> insect, uh, you, you know, love for her children to kind of, you know, raise them and whatnot. So it was, um, it was a film that came together very, very quickly. Uh, we had just done a movie called Sublet before it, uh, and we built a, a full set inside like an old like auto garage that someone had just moved out of. So it's like the set barely fit inside. Like we had to squeeze between the walls and the walls of the set to kind of get around it. Um, but 
um, while we were shooting that, we came up with this idea and wrote it with uh, Jamie LaForest and went in and moved the walls around and kind of created this new set for this movie called that we were doing called Bite. Um, we ended up finishing it and submitting it to Fantasia and it got in. Um, and it was just just done kind of in the nick of time kind of thing. Uh, and, and we had shown it to a couple friends, uh, just a private little screening in our living room. And we thought it was just a lot of fun because it was gross and gooey or whatever. And uh, they had a hard time, like they had a lot of fun watching it, but they were like, this is so gross. Like I can't eat after this. Like they were like really upset in a good way from it. So we were like, Hey, you know, that's kind of funny. You know, maybe what we'll do at the premiere is like, if it's a gross film, maybe we'll do like barf bags. Like we always like to kind of make an event of our screening. So we went and like just on home printer made like a bunch of these like, you know, dollar store uh, uh, barf bags and gave it out to the audience and everything. So then we watched the movie and as we were watching it, I remember there was a point where there was, um, you know, it, it was great. I loved it because, it, you know, people were like grossed out at the right times or jumping at the right times, cheering. It was it was like that festival premiere that you really, really want. Um, but there was um, some commotion going on at the one side at one point, And I was kind of like, oh, what's going on here? Like then someone was getting up and I was like, all right, so, you know, someone's going to the washroom or something like that. But there's a bit of a commotion. And then um, but I was just focusing on the movie. Uh, but as the credits rolled, um, Mitch Davis from Fantasia actually ran in and he came up to me and he goes, dude, this is happening outside right now. And he showed me his phone and it was like an ambulance outside. And I had no idea what was going on. He was like, yeah, some guy like got up and fainted and smashed his head. And like, you know, two people have thrown up and like, there was just all this commotion, I guess, that I, I didn't even realize was happening during the movie. Um, but we went up and we did, um, you know, the Q&A after and, you know, confirmed there's vomit on the floor and, uh, you know, <laughs> make sure that this person who was in the ambulance, you know, we, we, we had someone call the hospital and make sure that they were OK. Um, they had a gash on their head and, um, you know, they were they were released. They were fine. But um, it was uh, it was something that uh, I, I Fantasia called it a, a falling ovation which is, you know, something that a lot of horror films are like very, very proud of, you know, someone faints during or is so crazy or whatever. Um, yeah. So it was, uh, it, it was an awesome experience and um, it was so much fun, but it was the first time, you know, we, we left the theater and like from that moment on for, you know, the, the rest of the festival circuit, um, it also won an audience award at Fantasia, um, but it went on to, you know, Sitches and went on to like a bunch of different film festivals um and the press that came out about this you know when when fantasia tweeted that there was an ambulance at the bite premiere because someone fainted it was so crazy or whatever it was you know tons of um you know radio interviews and and press and like there's just so many people reaching out about this movie and for us it was like we were we just made this small you know horror film for 100 grand basically in you know guelph ontario with our friends um uh, it was such a small tiny little thing but uh it just got noticed um you know, all over the world. And it really helped us kind of get to the next step step of what we were doing. And uh, it was, and on top of it, it was just so much fun. I mean, we had fun every day on set with that movie. Every day was a new gag, a new weird eggs and goo gag or something like that. It was just, uh, it's really one of those movies that it would be, you know, <laughs> I wish so, I could go back and remake it now, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, I was at that premiere and I remember, um, cause I remember we were talking and, uh, and you said, Hey, Hey, can you help hand out these barf bags? I said, yeah, 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 that's great. I we had, uh, we had put um a mint in each one, so it was a barf the bag with, after, right? Yeah, with yeah. one 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 of those singular like really cheap mints that you used to get at like the you white know, and green ones. Yeah, the white yeah. and green ones, like the worst <laughs> mints. But uh, yeah, so we were handing those out. But what had happened was as well, which because I remember handing these out furiously. But what had happened was that I had taken a cab in Montreal to the theater, and um, I had all these barf bags, and for some reason I left my phone uh, in the cab. And you know, this was like a few years ago and I was just like, Oh my God, I need to call the cab company. Where's my phone? I lost everything I'm in Montreal. I'm in a foreign city. And like, uh, and then I had to hand out these barf bags. So I'm wondering if like, maybe that had anything to do. Cause I must've handed them out fairly quickly. And, and I remember, I, telling I remember people, watching you, you, you were, need these, you need this, yeah, you need to get this, you need to get this. Yeah. <laughs> so, but, uh, not that I'm taking credit for that. I'm not, but like, uh, but I do feel <laughs> like I know that some people go, well, I didn't feel it was like, it was, it was that gross. But at the same time, there's not that much blood in the movie, but there's tons of goo and ooze and liquid and icky, sticky, gross and, stuff. Yeah. And, and that's I the think, thing. Like some people, some people that grosses people out. Some people, they don't, you know, there's like, 
there was something that I was like, I remember incorporating into her makeup on her shoulders and stuff. And it was like, almost like a lotus flower. So it's like holes. And there's like right. a, there's like a fear that um, people have. I actually have it too. Like I remember seeing this, fo- like a lotus flower photoshopped onto someone's shoulder or something. And I was like, Oh God, Oh God. Like it just makes me feel so sick. So, you know, it affects people differently for sure. But I think it's the same thing. Like, I think it probably has the same similar uh, uh, aspect like blood, right? Some people yeah. can look at blood and it doesn't affect them. And some people look at blood and they'll pass out. And I'm wondering, and I also remember like in that particular day in Montreal, it was like one of the hottest days. So I think it's like the heat and like the theater and the, the not knowing what was going on. And like, and also as well, like if someone gives you something like a barf bag, then you all automatically start thinking like, uh, um, I might barf. Right. So anyway, but <laughs> That, uh, but also as well, like that's lived on forever, which is, which is pretty cool. And that's, that's what every horror director, uh, filmmaker wants, right. Is there a film to live on past its premiere and, and go out there into the universe and, uh, you know, do, uh, do all that kind of fun stuff. So, um, but, uh, listen, um, speaking of the universe, uh, we've got, uh, I think, uh, oh, Wait a second. I think we've got another guest here. I think we've got another guest in the exactly. Takeover Tuesday studio. Um, let me just let me just go over here and I'll just see who it is. And uh, oh my goodness, it's uh, good day, good day. Oh man, it's Matthew Minerver. It's it's <laughs> it's it's wow. This is crazy. This is actually Psycho Gorman himself. There you go. Well, Psycho Gorman's over here actually. I'll just bring, I'll bring him in there. there. He is. Oh, nice. Hold on, hold on. Let me put that up on the big screen there. There he is. There he is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> He's tuning in, too. So, uh, yes, uh, Matthew Nineveh, director, and uh, you're dropping by because you've got some special news, and we'll get to that in just a second. But if anyone doesn't know, yeah, it, it also known as Psycho Gorman to the rest of the known unknown galaxy, correct? That, that, that's that's right. correct. Yeah, yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> you guys nailed it. <laughs> uh, well, listen, thanks for stopping by. Um, I don't know who wants to, people are like, why is this? Good? Why, wait, wait, what's going on here? Why is Psycho Gorman on the Black Fun District Takeover Tuesday thing? When, well, I don't know. I mean, oh, who, wants to, who wants to get, a, to get to this? Chad, do you want to go ahead and, and lead with this? Yeah, I'll, I mean, I'll give that. you the real reason why he's here. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so during the pandemic, uh, Matthew actually reached out to us. Um, he had a, a, a project that he was um putting together and he had actually filmed a ton of footage for it already uh and he showed it to us and it looked phenomenal uh he already had some partners involved and uh uh, raised a little bit of funding was trying to close it all so uh he came to us and said you know i (laughs) i've got a team i know what i'm doing here i just need some funds i need someone to kind of you know help bring the money together to make this happen then i got it so um, the footage looked amazing. And I mean, I've known Matthew from, uh, for years and, and some of the other projects he had done, uh, like transference. Um, and it was, uh, I just know he's such a capable, capable, um, talented director and filmmaker and everything. I mean, he does it all. Oh, um, shucks. He's, Thank uh, you. He's, a, he's a lot like <laughs> us, you know, uh, it was something that, uh, and, and honestly, I remember watching like the sizzle that he had put together and I was like, I don't even know how the hell this guy did this. So, um, so that's a great sign. Uh, so we brought it to uh, Breakthrough Entertainment and we all worked together and worked with the partners and, and brought some funds together. And uh, during the pandemic, pretty much in the heat of the lockdown, uh, Matt went out and, and shot Death Valley. Yeah. Which is, uh, you know, this awesome kind of creature feature. I don't know. It's like, what's it compared to? It's like alien. Yeah, let's that's. Meets- yeah, let's throw evil or something like a little bit sorry, of overlord I, in there. Yeah, yeah overlord. Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's throw that in there. Yeah, yeah so. Matt, Matt, give us the rundown on the. Give us the rundown. Your rundown on on Death Valley, and uh, um, and then we'll uh, we'll tell everyone what's going on with it. Well, yeah, just Death Valley was just my chance of making something while there's nothing going on. Like the pandemic hit, and I was like, I want to make a monster movie after PG. I learned so much, and I wanted to make an action movie. And I only had a crew of 10, including actors. I'm like, let's go make something. So, uh, yeah, Death Valley is just uh, it's a smorgasbord of uh, a monster action buddy cop, um, you know, man against everything movie that we made uh, uh, over the pandemic. And we filmed it on weekends, Monday to Friday. We'd be like build the sets and get everything lined up. And then on the weekend, we'd film it and. It was a great time. It was just, you know, hanging out with the buddies and making the best use of 
the pandemic and kind of getting all our frustration out at uh, you know an unseen enemy. So we made a movie with lots of enemies so that we could just get out all of our frustration during this time so <laughs> <laughs> awesome awesome well listen uh i know a lot of people don't didn't really actually know about this this is a big surprise and we're gonna we're gonna announce some details uh when we come back but i figured hey let's get everyone a taste um do you mind if we just throw up the death valley trailer and uh give every give everyone a peek let's do okay. it okay all right here we go and we'll be right after the right after this we'll be back with matt and talking about uh death valley and and chat about uh about some special some special news coming uh coming out of black font distro as well for 2022 Eight hours ago, San Mieza Institute received a distress call from one of their compounds. Alpha, we've entered the facility, starting our search. Looks like they found something in the ice. That's Chloe. They're coming. What is this thing? The longer we stay here, the more dangerous it is for you. Right on. Uh, Death Valley, right. ladies and gentlemen. That looks absolutely amazing. And as you saw by the end of the trailer, uh, the movie is currently streaming on Shudder. Uh, so if you've got the Shudder uh, app or the streaming service, uh, make sure you go check that out tonight. Uh, but also, um, Chad, I'm going to throw it over to you. Uh, we got another special Christmas announcement, our end of year uh, Super Xmas supersized uh, episode of Takeover Tuesday wouldn't be complete without uh, a couple of surprises. And uh, yeah, the floor is yours, sir. Tell us what's going on with Death Valley. Yeah, so I mean, um, we were excited to kind of be able to work with Shutter again to um, figure out how to kind of co-release this film. Um, they have it on their digital platforms, but they've allowed us to release it uh, through uh, TVOD platforms. So your Rogers, your Bell, your Kojiko, uh, Shaw, those things across Canada. Uh, we're going to be doing that in Q2. Uh, so it's, you know, a chance that we get to... Uh, Kind of go out and promote this film again um you know get it to more fans in canada um you know just through some more outlets uh and you know also work with matt and and continue kind of the push and and the press push and um just trying to get more eyes on this movie to uh show everyone i guess all the hard work that's kind of gone into it and i really i gotta say again even you know every time i watch the trailer every time i watch this movie i'm so impressed with matt and you know the whole team that that kind of pulled this together i know he'd uh he'd send me stills from set half the time. It was like, you know, we, he was always there. He was always either working on the sets, you know, with him and one or two people, or, you know, he's got his minimum crew there because you could only really have 10 people in, a, in indoors at once. So it was just like the main people that had to be there. Um, but he'd send me, send me stills and I'd, I'd just be blown away all the time. I, you know, what, what they were making literally in their garage. Um, um yeah. It's 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 a feat. It's truly indie filmmaking at its best. It's a uh, really really impressive and and something I'm really really proud of that we got to be part of. Yeah, I'm pumped for this movie, and uh, I can tell you it's it's everything you think it's going to be if you're a fan of the genre. And uh, of course, uh, um, big shout out to Psycho Gorman too, and Steve, his team. Like, what an amazing film that came out this year mm -hmm. as well. So, when uh, and Matt, we haven't really talked. I hope you come. I hope you, you'll come back on the program and maybe do a full episode. Uh, uh, me and you anytime get into the, in, get into the uh, the production stuff about it. But uh, I know Chad has some like, stories. Yeah, well, all I know, all I know is when I watched the trailer, I was like, uh, well, no, no, I. I I would, I remember asking Chad, I remember uh, you, you were saying, uh, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, we're doing the production stuff uh, with, uh, with Matt and the guys for death Valley. And I said, how's it going? And he said, he said, there's a flamethrower in it. <laughs> like uh, he goes, the and you're like, the monster looks amazing. And we never had any, like, we never had any doubt. I was just, I was just like, well, you know, like it's going to be, the monster's going to look amazing. It's going to look super cool. And like anyone who's a fan of uh, creature features is going to love it. Um, but man, like there's a, there, there's a, there's, there's like full out war action sequences in this movie. There's, and, and yes, like I said, there's a fucking flamethrower in it. Would you care to comment? 
Yeah, I, I mean, I'll, I'll just jump in first, <laughs> Matt, you can finish it, but I remember Matt sent me a picture and he was like, dude, check this out. And it's like a flamethrower. And I was like, dude, that looks great. Like that, like whoever made that, you know, it looks great. He's like, no, this is, it's real. It's a real flamethrower. Like, oh, <laughs> yeah, I remember, I remember Chad uh, say, I wish you didn't message me because now I'm, uh, I'm involved in this. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah, we, we found a flamethrower. We're trying to figure out like, uh, how can we amp up the third act? And I'm like, a flamethrower would do it. It really would. So, uh, yeah, we brought it in. We wet down the set. It was just my brother and I. I'm holding the camera. I'm pretty sure I burned all my arm hair off holding the camera as that thing goes. But, uh, yeah, we had we had a blast. That was, uh, it was everything. The thing I love about this movie is uh, there's, there's really no CG in the whole film. Like, if people jump off cliffs, it's them really jumping off the cliff. Like, there's real explosions going off beside them. And, right. And the real flamethrower. And, uh the practical monsters. So yeah, and I'm very, of that, yeah. Matt was also the monster in the film. Just, just to I throw that the in the whole mix. Yeah. If he wasn't yeah. doing enough already. That's right. And that's, that's like, and that's a, that's started to become a serious <laughs> resume, like a serious monster resume. I'm right? just, I'm just going to go for how many monsters I can be. So I'm just going to, <laughs> keep throwing it on there <laughs> awesome uh well uh listen matt thanks again for for dropping by um we're gonna let oh, you go you. i know you're a busy guy um playing monsters and directing movies and doing what, all the other stuff that you do uh, as well but um we're really excited to have uh you and your team as part of black fawn distribution's family now uh and we're really looking forward to putting out death valley uh so we've got vicious fun coming out 2022 we've also got death valley coming out 2022 uh, that's a that's a dual combo that again you can check them both out on Shutter, but we're gonna have some physical releases for both those films and uh, some other ways for people up here in Canada to check them out. So uh, uh, Matt, thanks again uh, for for coming on. You know what? I'm just going to I'm gonna let you go, um, but I think I'm just, I think we should just play the trailer again because like because uh, why not, right? And uh, then people can look at that <laughs> flamethrower and see you know they can actually see for themselves how how fucking crazy it is. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna play the trailer again, and then Chad, you're gonna stick around. You got some more announcements too coming up, right? Yep, yep. Okay, thanks a lot, Matt, for stopping by. I appreciate it. We'll see end you guys. Off. Yeah, I'm going to bug you. We're going to have you back on the program closer Love to it. the release date, maybe, and uh, we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about said flamethrower for an hour. All right. <laughs> see you All right, guys. guys. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, guys. Okay, we'll be right back with Chad Archibald right after this. Here, here, this is it again, the trailer for Death Valley, um, which is coming out on Black Font Distribution in Canada in 2022. Enjoy. Lockdown begins. <laughs> Eight hours ago, San Mieza Institute received a distress call from one of their compounds. Alpha has entered the facility, starting our search. Looks like they found something in the ice. That's Chloe? They're coming. What is this thing? The longer we stay here, the more dangerous it is for you. distribution.com all right and we're back with uh oops i just got to take this off here we go and back with chad archibald uh chad um that's pretty awesome man that's two announcements we're doing pretty good tonight eh yeah let's keep it going <laughs> what else we got um all right well we got a whole boatload of comments here so let's get to some of them because i know some people have been pretty patient and i just again i wanted to say at the top of the program like like i said at the top of pr- top of the program um it is uh christmas so uh Let's give back a little bit here. Um, okay, quick uh, quick question from uh, f- from Loco here. Uh, I love the Blacklist. Any plans for new Blacklist releases? 
Uh, oh man! In a word, yes. Uh, keep your eyes peeled. We're going to be doing some. Uh, uh, we're going to be doing some some pre-orders. I think for that soon, probably in the early of the new year. I think, Chad. I think that's kind of what we've kind of tossed yeah, can around. We say what it's for? Yeah, sure. Well, yeah, it'd be for let's do it. it. It'd be for vicious fun, right? <laughs> it'd be for vicious fun. <laughs> yeah, vicious fun. I mean, we kept stuff from set. We've got a ton of goodies. It's such a fun film, and uh, yeah, we're gonna pack that blacklist. It's a, uh, it's kind of a, the return for uh, for the blacklist. So it's gonna be a good one for sure. Yeah, and uh, we anticipate having blacklists for every every release that we have coming out uh, in 2022. Um, and uh, and I've got a, an announcement as well, actually, which, which was which will be the first I think blacklist coming out um, in the early new year. Uh, in addition to Vicious Fun, but let's get through some of these comments first because I don't want, I don't want to leave people hanging. <laughs> uh, this is a huge comment. Um, but I'm going to put it up just because it's John and he's uh, a friend of the show and uh, a longtime listener and viewer. And uh, we want to thank him for his support. Plus it's really funny. Um, but uh, John says, uh, uh, Hey Chad, a huge fan. Uh, you bring originality to a whole new level in horror. My absolute favorite movie of yours is I'll take your dead, uh, which starts with a mafia like feeling and ends in a supernatural state. The movie is pure genius. And I have to know where the idea came from and how you did how you found how you found that uh, that all star cast? A uh, great job, man. Uh, sorry, Benner. The angry face is me. Damn kids, I knew it. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, how did how did you get that cast quickly? I mean, we've got a ton of comments here. Like, there's like a million. So, but quickly, how did you put that cast together when you when you were putting together? I'll take you dead. Yeah, thanks, John. First of all, uh, thanks for checking it out. It's uh, yeah. I mean, we were uh, we were casting that film. Um, a lot of it was through, you know, regular casting. Um, uh, Ashley Hallahan, our casting director, and uh, I know Ava Preston for one. She just came in. Uh, you know, we we auditioned a slew of kids, and she was just by far. She came in and nailed it right off the first try. Um, we knew instantly that you know she was the one for sure, and she came in. And she not only killed it, um, but she. Uh, <laughs> Brought a lot of smiles to set uh, while we were, you know, in an old abandoned house in the middle of like minus 40 weather in Aurelia in the winter. Um, on top of that, uh, you know, Jess, um, who came in as, as well, we reached out to her um, late in the game when we couldn't fa- we couldn't find someone for that role. Uh, and she just killed it. Absolutely. Uh, Aiden, on top of that, too, um, you know, was someone that Breakthrough had worked with before and uh you know, he's a, he's a good bud now. I think, uh, you know, a lot of the cast, we still keep in touch. Uh, on top of it, uh, Ari Millen, um, you know, Ari and Cody grew up like they were, they were in cribs together. Like they were, they were, um, their parents were buds and, um, you know, they grew up, uh, in Kingston. Uh, and, and, you know, it's, it's awesome, you know, that, that they still get to work together and we all get to work together as a kind of community and grow together. Um, so we always love when we can have Ari in a film and not only that, it's like, he's just, he's one of the most talented dudes that we know for sure. Um, you know, there's no question. We, we never cast him cause we know him. We cast him cause, cause he really is just, we joke about it in, in vicious fun. It's like his character is Bob and he's a, a chameleon in the movie, but, uh, but really that's, you know, Ari is a chameleon. He can, he can do it all. He's been in the last three films, uh, vicious of yours, vicious fun, Oak room. And I'll take your dead before that. Every movie, he's a different character. He's always seemingly a villain, but he, he is Mm -hmm. certainly a different shade of nightmare. I guess you would say in each role, like he doesn't really recreate his roles. They're, they're all very, very unique and very, very, uh, um, very, very particular to the film that he's in, not just trying to recreate something that he's done in the past. Yeah. And he really, he brings it a lot, so much of it himself as well. You know, he's, uh, he, uh, he really comes in with ideas. You know, he, he makes a point of, of really diving into the roles and, uh, you know, he's he's just a talent for sure. I'm sure we'll be be working together again in the future. I know we are actually. (laughs) (laughs) He's also got Uh sick dance moves too. (laughs) <laughs> Check yeah. out vicious yeah. fun. Uh, okay, a quick. Um, this is this is a friend of a friend of our somebody we we know really really well. Um, uh, but uh, you we also posted. Uh, you supplied us with a lot of photos that we posted on our Instagram today throughout the day. A lot of the stuff was from sets and sets that you've built from the ground up. Uh, so we can probably get to talking about a little bit about set design as well if we can if we can get to it. But uh, yeah, quick comment from Kim of of course. Uh, hi Chad, I was wondering if you plan to do any filming on that lovely country <laughs> property in Aaron. <laughs> uh, oh, I'm sure we will. I'm sure we will. We actually shot a little bit of Oak Room there. Um, and we shot uh, the Heretics Cabin. It was actually just in the forest behind my sister's place. Kim is my sister. Uh, also <laughs> my hero in life. 
Um, she, uh, she's, you know, supported us through so many music videos. We've had endless shoots, you know, we've had bands hanging out in her basement waiting while we prep, uh, you know, she's, uh, she's been a huge supporter of everything that, uh, that we've done from the start. So thank you, Kim, from, from all of us for sure. And yes, <laughs> I'm sure we'll be out there bugging you sometime soon. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, just a couple, let's, let's just start rolling through these comments then. So, uh, from loco saying, I love the Easter egg of the bed of the dead poster next to the wall phone. Uh, so that's <laughs> great. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, oh, okay. Yes. Here's a great, so talking about the bite, uh, the bite, the infamous bite world premiere screening, uh, necromandria, uh, said can't buy pol- publicity like puke. And then a follow-up yes. comment confirmed <laughs> that it was popcorn vomit, oh, like the worst vomit. I don't know if that's the worst vomit, but it's, it's up, it's up there. It's sloppy. <laughs> um, um, here's a question. How many eggs do you, th- do you guys think you used in, uh, in bite? Do you, do you have a rough number? I think uh, I remember I I looked everywhere to try to figure out what we could use for these little eggs for bite. And it was, um, you know, I had gone into the dollar store and found those little like air fresheners that had the balls in them. And I was just like, this is nothing. I need like a million of these, you know? Um, So I ended up looking and there was this, there was these things called spitballs and they were like little, little pebbles and you put them in water and they grow into little soft balls and kids put them in the straws or whatever and spit them at people or whatever. Um, but I saw there was like a, a video that they had where they filled a pool with these balls and they were just these little eggs. And I was like, Oh, that's amazing. So I ordered a little pack of them and I put, I put the pack in a, in a bowl with water in my bathroom and I left it overnight and I came back the next morning and they were every, they were all over the floor. Like they had grown everywhere. And I was like, this is perfect. So I think I went and I ordered like, I don't know, almost 50,000 of them. And then we just got them and we just had buckets and buckets and buckets of like sludge. And we had like, you know, one would be full of coffee water and we'd dump it in there and then we'd get like orangish balls. And then we'd have another one that was like, like a milky kind of water kind of thing. And that would have like milky eggs. And it's like, we had all these different kinds of eggs for different things, but it was, uh, we had a full room. A full room was just the egg room. It was just the hatchery. <laughs> the <hatchery. laughs> um, it, and I just wanted to throw up a couple of comments here uh, from from the Death Valley trailer, which was which we just screened twice because I can do that on this program. Uh, and uh, I just this was out to Matt. It's, it's too bad he, he's actually not here anymore. But a hunky boy has entered the chat, uh, <laughs> and of course uh, the trailer. Yeah, Death Valley has uh, some the thing vibes to it for sure. Uh, which is yeah, absolutely. Um, we're both a big fan of uh, big fans of uh, practical effects, and I feel like. I feel, I don't know when that changed. I think, um, but nowadays I feel like it's like practical effects are the way to go. Like if you can do it practically, you should. And then maybe it's also way that more fun. C- yeah. And then you can augment that <laughs> with C- CGI like in post. Right. Yeah. Uh, quick shout out from Steve V obviously our buddy, uh, one of the directors, one of the filmmakers of Hail to the Deadites, uh, which is an amazing documentary as well that you can check out on the Evil Dead. Uh, but Steve can't wait for Vicious Fun. Buddy, we'll get it to you. We'll hopefully have a blacklist. And well, we've committed to a blacklist, so we will have a blacklist for you. And I'm sure Steve will pick one up. So that's great. Uh, and um, uh, oh, and someone said, oh, someone just commented saying they still have their jar of lollipops from I'll Take Your Dead, which we put out the last blacklist, which is actually nice. Cool. So, nice. Um, <laughs> And, uh, oh, okay. So here's, uh, uh, here's, here's an interesting segue. One last comment here. Uh, we've got, uh, uh, how did you meet Steph Copeland? Who uh, obviously Steph is, um, uh, the composer for the majority of the films that you've put out in the last 10 years or so. Uh, her music scores are amazing. Uh, lots of soundtracks on colored vinyl these days. Any ideas of having soundtracks for black fun film scores released? Hmm. I don't know how much we can say about this. <laughs> we haven't talked about how much we can say about this, but um, I'll answer the Steph question. Um, sure. Yeah. 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 No, years ago um, when we were, uh, we were making a movie called Annie social and our DP and longtime DP and great friend. And um, just the, the person who makes all our films look so amazing. Uh, Jeff Mahar. Um, his partner it was Steph Copeland and she was an amazing musician and, you know, was always interested in scoring a movie. Um, and we just collaborated on that film and uh, she did any social for us. I think it was her first feature that she had scored. And since then she scored almost every film that we've done. Um, the majority of them through black font films. And I mean, she's so talented and she surprises us every single movie. Um, I'm so, you know, 
so proud of her for sure. She's 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 in such high demand now that it's hard for us to even work with her. Um, but she's so talented, such an amazing human being, and uh, man, she really deserves like a Black Fawn vinyl one of these days. Like just a, just a yeah, vinyl so. Of, like, all of her scores or something from all our films yeah i don't know um that's a really great idea i mean <laughs> it's almost like we've given this some thought um yeah what i can tell you is um we can't announce too many things right now but the let's just put it this way we know there's a lot of fans of stuff out there and um uh we're we're huge fans as well and i think like again kind of like ari millen acting wise in all these films like Steph always comes with a whole different sort of vibe for each film like it's it blows me away because it's like and i know the the i think it's not that i didn't notice that before but i really noticed it when i heard her score the oak room and vicious fun back to back and those two films couldn't be different from one another the scores are completely different but at the same time bring this kind of like emotional connection to the film as well um so yeah we're we're putting some heads together we're, we're spending some brain power on this uh to see if we can get some sort of uh some sort of release out there and yeah we, we we've heard you loud and clear we know that there's a lot of demand for vinyl right now and uh let's just put it this way we're, we're working on it and we're gonna see what we can do and potentially maybe that's something that comes out uh or maybe some news comes out about that maybe in early 2022 so uh so stay tuned i guess uh and speaking of um uh, speaking of music, uh, let me just flip around here i just wanted to kind of give uh, a quick shout out to um the music that we had on the show tonight. So uh, of course, uh, music tonight was provided by uh, Derek Prince Cox from the walk show. who produced our uh, awesome kick-ass intro music that still needs a name. If you have a name for the, for the, for the song, uh, please let us know on Instagram or let us know here. And uh, we're going to do a tally up and then we're going to call that, that song, the name that is given by one of the listeners out there. And you're going to get a prize pack as well. So if you pick the winning, winning name, you're going to get a prize pack from black Fun distro, but uh, yeah, Derek Prince Cox. He's also, he also runs the walk show, uh, which is also available on Apple podcasts and Spotify. Make sure you check that out. And Ben living uh, from uh, Ben, Ben living music.com uh, provided the beats in our new segment. And then Fox grinder, uh, which you can find at Fox grinder.bandcamp.com, uh, which is F O X G R N D R dot bandcamp.com uh provide the music for our commercial segment there because again i wouldn't be at black font distro takeover tuesday episode if i didn't selfishly shamelessly promote the fact that we have merch and movies available for sale in the black font distribution store which you can check out at black distribution.com slash store and let's get into some other let's get to some other announcements because i got some here as well i didn't want to i didn't want to feel left out um over the course of this segment or of the course of this episode. But uh, speaking of the store, um, we're currently working on revamping our online store. So there's going to be a brand new Black Fawn Distro store or shop or whatever we're going to call it. Not sure yet, uh, but that actually is going to be launched in early 2022 as well. So to coincide with all these new releases, all these new blacklists that we have coming out, there'll be a new way. It's going to be a lot more user-friendly. And there's also going to be for listeners of this program, as well as people that are on our mailing list, um, there's going to be some special codes and uh, some discount codes going out to everyone uh, once once that store is launched. So keep an eye out for those. Of course, if you're already a Blacklist member, if you've bought one of our Blacklist packages in the past, you automatically get a discount off the f- at all future Blacklist packages as well. So if you have any questions about that, make sure you reach out to us, let us know. But uh, we'll be able to, we'll, we'll, we'll be refreshing everyone's memory um, uh, when the time comes in, in early in the new year. It's been a while. It's been a couple of years pandemic omicron whatever um but we've got blacklists and they're on their way so and we'll be able to ship these right to your door as well um so there'll be there'll there'll be some shipping included in that uh which will basically mean you don't have to actually come out of your house to get it um hopefully we're not there but if we are there's a contingency plan right chad that's right (laughs) (laughs) so also on the docket as well um we've got physical releases coming for hall uh which is not something we've announced yet um but hall which was the viral zombie thriller that came out uh, last year um, is getting a physical release. So we're looking, we're putting the components together for that. And we're looking to see that come out in uh, early 2022 as well. So that'll be our third physical release coming out. So we've got hall, we've got uh, vicious fun and we've got death Valley coming out in 2022. And of course um, we're still fig- figuring out the details, but like I said, I can't imagine us not doing a blacklist package for that. I know uh, um, uh, Francisco, the director is really, really pumped on that too. And we're going to put this together something cool, um, just to kind of get it out there. And, uh, it's a really great flick. Um, of course, uh, also starring Julian Richings, 
who was also in Vicious Fun, and uh, Mark Gibson, who was also in Vicious Fun, are both in you know, both in Hall, and it's definitely worth checking out. You can actually see it on VOD across Canada right now through all major uh, satellite and cable providers, including Rogers, Bell, Telus, Kojiko, Shaw, and who am I forgetting? Sasktel, I think. Yeah. Uh, and also uh, as well available on iTunes and Google play. Uh, so if you want to check out any of the trailers for this, uh, you can check them out at, um, on our YouTube channel. And um, of course, uh, another, uh, obviously this isn't a surprise, but uh, we did just acquire the rights to Peppergrass. So Peppergrass will be having uh, a VOD release and that will be launching. We don't know ex- the exact date on that yet, but again, we're thinking Q2 2022, I think is kind of what we landed on. And so, uh, so Peppergrass will also be coming out. And last but not least, this is brand new news that we haven't announced yet. Um, but uh, our good friends at Five Seven Films, uh, the creators of Scarecrows as well as um, uh, Jack of All Trades, uh, their new—I um, don't even know what you would call it. It's like a comedy horror movie, comedy true crime. It's, a, it's, it's, like a, a, it's like a true crime doc meets just an, a ton of Mad Men. Unreal true crime story. Insane? That's it's an unreal true crime story. Uh, faking a murder uh, is actually going to be dropping on Black Von Dist as well uh so we we love those dudes um really really great guys and 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 two of like the nat- most naturally funny guys i've ever met like just just the just the way they 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 riff off of each other even when you're talking to them in person is 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 really funny they're they're super talented um comedy is a hard a hard genre to kind of uh finagle but for some reason those guys kind of <laughs> they've 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 got something there for sure uh faking murder which was actually available in hollywood suite um over the last year um but uh, again that uh, we're going to be doing a vod release again that film will be available through all major uh satellite and cable providers including rogers bell telus and kojiko shot and sask tell and mts i think as well as itunes and google play oh my god that's a lot yeah. of talking i'm and so sorry check that out definitely check that movie out it's so insane as much as it's like it's comedic for sure but it's it's so intense at points like it's such a and and i mean like the story behind the story is almost as crazy as the actual movie um it's really like go into it give it a watch look it up online watch some interviews with these guys how they made this movie um it's 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 madness it's i madness. remember i remember just to talk about like well, well i mean i kind of want to save this story but it's it's still funny and i have you on so let's talk about it a little bit but i remember when you said i went to this thing during tiff for like hollywood suite and the five seven guys were there <laughs> and they did this presentation thing and i was like oh yeah because i think we had just picked up scarecrow so we were just kind of in the process of releasing scarecrows and you said um uh yeah and I was like, how'd it go? And you're like, you didn't even know how to respond. You were like, yeah, it was, <laughs> it was super, it was just, it was kind of weird, but I can't, I couldn't tell if it, like, I didn't really tell what happened. And then we and watched, watched the movie. Yeah. 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 We watched the movie, movie and we were like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's like the reaction from everyone there was the same. It was like, sorry, what? Like they basically are, you know, they went out and they did this documentary track of all trades. Um, where you know it was something really personal to them and and they went out and their characters in the actual story um it's just a, a real documentary um mm-hmm. and it meant a lot to them um so they were like you know what do we do to kind of step this up and and they went out and they found a a unsolved mystery and they were like you know what let's go out and just film us we're gonna go find a murder we're gonna go find someone who actually like we're gonna put the pieces together of this kind of cold case and see if we can figure it out and where they get is, is crazy. It's yeah. crazy. And it's scary and shocking and funny. And it's got, it's got all of it. So. And, 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 and their family and their families didn't want them to do it. Like no. they were like, what do you do? Like, what are you doing? And they're like, no, no, that's fine. And it's like, we found this weird video and we're just going to investigate it and we'll film it. And like, you know, we'll put together some sort of, you know, true crimes hot right now and whatever, but their families actually were like, you guys are crazy. Like, don't go looking for this guy. Like he's, he's obviously like a nut job. And, um, yeah, it's, it's really, really funny. So faking a murder, um, really excited to be putting that one out underneath the black Fawn distro banner. So what do we got? We got faking a murder coming out. We got pepper grass coming out. We got a uh, physical release of hall. We got death Valley coming out both as a physical and a VOD release. We got vicious fun coming out as a physical release. And, uh, I think, is that it? Oh, I guess we can talk about Tubi. You guys want to, you want to talk about Tubi? Yeah. We have time. Yeah. I mean, we're at like almost an hour and a half. Like this is a super sized episode. There's still people watching. So I feel like, you know what? Let's, um, you know what I'm gonna do? Let's 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 do it. Let's take a little break because I need a bit of a halftime here. Okay, so um, <laughs> so we're gonna do we're gonna do a, a quick thing and uh, and then we're gonna get back to some 
uh, some questions and some comments from our listeners out there. Thanks everyone for their support. Uh, everyone's been, there's, we have a huge audience tonight, uh, everyone tuning in and, and posting a lot of comments. So we really, we really, really, really do appreciate that. Um, uh, means the world to us and, and thanks for the support for sure. But having said that it wouldn't be a takeover Tuesday, um, a real takeover Tuesday um, without a rapid fire section, right? So Chad, mm -hmm. this is where we put you, our guest uh, in the rapid, in, you know, in, in close range to our rapid fire questions. Uh, it's brought to you uh, and brought to us by Wellington Breweries, Hellas Lager, uh, which are, which is one of our main sponsors for the show. Um, take advantage of Wellington's free local delivery, visit their brewery retail store in Guelph or pick up some cans wherever you, uh, wherever you buy your favorite adult beverages. Um, they are available in the LCBO. Uh, Hell's La Hellas Lager, Hells Yeah, uh, Rapid Fire, uh, we can't thank well enough for their support over the last couple of years, um, but they do keep us fueled when we're out on the road at conventions as well, keeping us uh, warm and fuzzy uh, when we're sitting at home uh, doing podcasts like this. So uh, I'm just going to reach back here off my uh, my shelf. I'm going to move this awesome walk show toque. Shout out to walk show and take one of these off the shelf. I got to crack this again. I need a little bit of a breather here. So take your time. Mm. Enjoy that. Oh, crisp deliciousness. Uh, amazing. Okay, Chad, rapid fire. Um, I loved how uh, just, a, you know, we like to keep things transparent and honest here in the show. Um, Chad called me earlier this afternoon, uh, digging around for questions, seeing what I was going to ask him um, and then provided and then pretended to be surprised when he said, you don't tell the guests what the questions are. No, I don't tell the guests what the questions are. Anyway, um, we did a post earlier today. We posted a little photo of you. Uh, and yet you provided, uh, which is like uh, you as a little kid dressed up as a cowboy. Um, and I thought we posed a question to, to everyone out there saying, um, you have five, I've always said you have five loves in this world, friends and family aside, that loved ones aside, pets aside, they count as family, but five main loves, uh, in the world. And they are horror movies, guns and roses, the Dallas Cowboys, Tom Cruise. And what's the last one, Chad? You're drinking one right now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Let's do it. Okay. So, uh, yes or no, uh, Thanos has snapped his fingers again and the entire Dallas Cowboys team has disappeared from the face <laughs> of the earth. Would you ever fully cheer on another NFL team? I'd say no. My, my loyalty dies with the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> yeah. yeah do their fans disappear? I, I, <laughs> I just hope that i'd disappear too i'd go wherever they go <laughs> <laughs> okay fair enough uh rapid fire you got to pick one uh, out of all the horror franchises and if given the opportunity which franchise would you like to take a stab at rebooting or remaking uh you know i know it's been done to death um but i've always wanted to do a hellraiser i, I love hellraiser as something i always loved like I remember watching Hellbound when I was young and being like, oh my God, like I just, I, I, I want to go. I want to make more Cenobites. I want to like, you know, just kind of live in that weird, um, that weird world. And uh, yeah, I, I just think it'd be so fun. Uh, are you excited for the new Hellraiser project? I am. You know, it's, it's nice that it's, uh, it's being switched up for sure. I think yeah. that, uh, I think it needs it for sure. I think what they're doing is, is amazing and it's going to be. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, I think I think it's like once you once you try and replace Doug Bradley, like he's such yeah. an iconic figure that you can't really do it. Like I just don't think you can do it with like another another dude. Like I just I just think it's like everyone's just gonna be it just does it's such work. a comparison. Whereas I think if you go like a complete 180 and try something completely different, I think you might you might grab some really, really cool results, right? And that's happened before too, right? So Okay, so moving on, uh, rapid fire question number three, help us out. Uh, you've been forced to live on a desert island, but you're not allowed to bring any Guns N' Roses albums with you. What's another album you would bring with you instead? Oh, this one's hard to admit, but probably $3 bill, y'all. $3, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sure. Is that I, mean, you I haven't got sick of it yet, so. <laughs> Are you saying that because I'm wearing a red hat right now? <laughs> it's a santa hat everyone listening it's a santa hat uh okay you know what hey like like we said at the top we keep it honest we keep it transparent yeah. right so we spend, like, spend my time there trying to figure out how i can karaoke counterfeit and, we you know that, that'd we, be my goal we were hanging out a couple of weeks ago and we talked about this and we said well we grew up in the 90s so we there was a time where you know we didn't know a lot of stuff 
<laughs> so, or what we were, or knew what we were doing. So, okay. So fair enough. Okay. Rapid fire question. Number four, what do you want? Tom Cruise has reached out to you personally and told you that you can film any stunt with him in it. What new stunt would you like to film Tom Cruise attempting? And you're the creative guy. Be creative. Oh man. I don't know what he, uh, what he hasn't done yet. I don't know. Conquer space. Isn't he already like, I, I thought there was something out there about him going to space. Yeah. There's a yeah, movie that, yeah, Everyone's like going to film the first movie in space or something like that. People are saying that that's, that's like, um, that could be a mission impossible movie It's mission impossible 10 yeah. or whatever. But like, I feel like every franchise goes to space. Right. But he's saying it's a different, the, the reporting is that it's a different film altogether, but I don't know if I believe that. Oh man. I didn't, I want to do that one. <laughs> like how, how do you beat the stuff that he's already done? It's just, I, I just love that. It's like, even like, even like top gun, he's like, I'll do top gun. But you got to push the production by six months so I can learn how to how to fly a fighter jet so I can do it for real. Yeah. So, okay. Say yeah. what you will about Tom Cruise, um, but you, I actually was never really a fan. And then we got to hanging out like years ago, and you were like, "Dude, like Tom Cruise is amazing. He does all his own stunts. Like watch any." And then, as the Mission Impossible movies have come out, they've gotten better and better and better. It's like one of the few franchises that keeps getting it keeps outdoing itself in really cool ways like from a storyline point of view and then an action point of view as well like i've seen that is it mission yeah ghost protocol like i think mission impossible 4 where he's like hanging out the window he's like hanging outside that building that's like you know five hundred thousand miles tall yeah. and like jeremy renner's just like dude like i'm i think i'm gonna die here yeah. or when he's on the plane when he's on the plane and the plane's actually taking off and he's actually yeah. hooked on the side it's like the best is like hearing his interviews where he's like no no i remember the moment that it was taking off and i was going i finally did it i i know I, I finally screwed up i've screwed up i'm gonna die here like he was convinced he was yeah. gonna die simon peck thought he was gonna die as well yeah. like simon peck was like this is crazy yeah. like what are you what are you doing but uh you know, hey, what can I you just do? Like, I just love Tom Cruise movies. I love them since I was a kid. I like, you know, something that really solidified is, is you know, he had a 25-year anniversary video on TomCruise.com, which, yes, I go to. Um, and it, <laughs> it was like this video. It was like truth 15 is minutes long. It was just a compilation of all the roles that he's played. And just watching it, it was like, they're they're just, they're all great, solid movies that I'd love to just watch on a Sunday afternoon, you know? Days of Thunder is... I would say I would say Top Gun Two is already released and it's called Days of Thunder. That's that's my take on it. <laughs> yeah. But I'm excited for Top Gun Three. Um, okay, so last but not least, uh, rapid fire. Tell us some more. Um, you're you've been known to be a bit of a beer connoisseur. Uh, can you tell us why Welling Welly Wellington Brewery uh, has meant so much to us over the years? Because I wanted to give you the opportunity yeah. to say a few words because uh, they have been a great sponsor for us and and a, and a big supporter of the show as well as the company. Yeah, I mean, when we were, um, you know, just starting out, we uh, started this company, we were just a bunch of buds who were kind of going out making movies, trying to release them on our own. And, you know, at one point, one of us had this crazy idea, because we all like to drink beer at conventions, you know, like we all like to go around and we had this crazy idea that, um, you know, we should find we should find a beer sponsor. And, you know, we went out and um, we know that Wellington had supported so many um awesome people in the horror community and just like the artistic community out there uh, in general, like every, even from their coasters and everything that they've kind of released over the years. And they're from Guelph, Ontario, which is our hometown too. Um, you know, we, we reached out to them and uh, you know, from that day on, I mean, they've been so supportive of us The you know, they've bent over backwards. They, you know, they've endlessly supplied Benner uh, with with beers on his back there <laughs> for, for the podcast, us at conventions. Um, I don't know how I would finish like the the last part of the show each time I did it if I didn't have a, a sweet welly in the middle. Benner run, runs off of. Yeah. In the morning, it's like he's just like a robot. You just pour a can of beer into the back of his head and welly, and then he starts functioning for the day. <laughs> we need to do. We need to come up with like a deadly grounds welly beer coffee. I feel yeah. like that's that's that that's should be on the docket for 2022 because we don't have enough going on. Um, okay. Well, that listen, listen, Chad. Thanks again for doing uh, the uh, the rapid fire. Of course, big shout out to Wellington Brewery and uh, Hellas Lager, uh, which keeps us fueled. If you're looking for uh, for to pick up some uh, some wellies, uh, you. Can do so at your local LCBO or wherever you purchase your adult beverages. But big thanks to them for their support as well as.
as our other sponsors, uh, Deadly Grounds Coffee, of course, and Twisted Teas. Uh, I don't know if Daryl's still on, but uh, uh, if he is, give us a shout out, Daryl. I just want to know if you're uh, if you're still kicking. So, um, but uh, listen, let's get back to some quick comments, and then I think we'll wrap things up. We've been going for like an hour and a half plus. Uh, this is our longest episode ever. So, um, which we knew what it we knew that was going to happen, right? Like we were we talking spend, this afternoon. We spent like, so much gonna... time talking to each other every single day of our lives. It's it, uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna happen. never going to get <laughs> <laughs> never going to get tired. Uh, so um, okay, so let's just see here. Oh, I had a you know what? Someone piped in earlier, and we forgot to put it up. But I know you'll you'll appreciate this one uh, if I can find him here. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is taking way too long. Everyone's listening on iTunes. Well, listen, if you've made it to like the hour 38 mark, then, uh, uh, then I'm, I'm good with that. Oh, long time friend. Speaking of speaking of $3 bill, y'all, uh, Brian Ancliffe. Fantastic. That's not a comment to that comment, but I feel like he would respond the same way. Yeah, Brian, absolutely. thanks. Ancliffe. Thanks for tuning in brother. I, I don't know where you are right now. I think he's on the East coast. Um, but, uh, that's amazing. It means a lot. Yeah. And I've got to say it too. Actually. I remember Brian Ancliffe showing up at my house when I was a young teen with a tape and he was like, you got to listen to this man. And I remember he put it in and played counterfeit and it blew my mind. I no was one like, knows this. I yeah. never even heard the genres of music mixed together like this. Like it was something I had never heard of. And back then, you know, with no internet or anything like that and people just handing around tapes, it was like this beat up dirty old tape. And I was like, where did you know <laughs> how many hands have touched this yeah. tape <laughs> and how many minds has it blown? Like just for some context in there too, I think we need to tell our audience as well. It's like, uh, so I don't care about saying this either. It's like, I'm a big Limp Bizkit fan too, just because But there was a time where I was like 15 years old or 16 years old and, and someone did that exact thing. Like gave me a CD and was like, dude, you gotta listen to this. It's like the next big thing coming out of Jacksonville, Florida. And it's like, you know, small town, Ontario. <laughs> in Canada, um, things took a lot longer to get to some places. And for some reason, everyone was listening to that record at that time. And it's just, you know, being like in your teenage years with nothing to do. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's a, it's a thing, right? So shout out to Ancliff. Thanks, Ancliff, for bringing that <laughs> that beautiful record into Chad's life. Uh, and uh, so quick thing. Um, all right. Uh, okay. So Brad says, uh, Brad McMillan, of course, our bud Brad McMillan, uh, does Chad switch to watching the CFL if Dallas is gone via yeah, the you know what? snap? That's, that's so hard. I've never been a CFL fan. And, and, and it's funny because I recently moved to Hamilton, Ontario, and I live like three blocks from the stadium. So the Grey Cup was just here. Hamilton, unfortunately, lost. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I will say the community around here throughout the city, um, the, the Tiger Cats fans are are like amazing like walking through the streets we have a, a dog named luna and we walk her all the time and just seeing like the amount of houses with flags and support and you know neighborhood support and uh it, it's pretty it's pretty awesome so i mean i don't know if i'm I, I don't know if i'm down with the three downs but you know i guess if i had to support a, a cfl team it would probably be hamilton now oh, uh yeah. but Again, I'm still hoping that. But like, what if, what if, what if, yeah, wherever the Cowboys go. The problem is, is like, if you cheer for the CFL for five years and then the, the like, the Avengers go back in time and reverse the snap, then everyone yeah. comes back and realizes that you're a big CFL fan. Embarrassing. <laughs> If anyone wants to ask me about the Hamilton curse too, uh, that's a, that's a topic for another show. Maybe not even this show, but, uh, happy to discuss with anyone interested in hearing more. Um, but uh, a couple quick other notes, uh, and then we'll just wrap up. But, uh, our friend Rye Barrett, obviously always great to hear from Rye, uh, stoked for all these releases. 2022 is BFD fire emoji. Look Thanks at his, brother. Look at his photo there. That looks like a Christmas album. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Working pandemic yeah, I, Christmas. Album. I would love to hear a Ryan Barrett Jazz Vano Christmas album. I'm just putting it Oh, there. absolutely. You've got a couple <laughs> pre orders here, Barrett. So uh, get on that for sure. Um, and uh, I think uh, just to end things off, um, I think, uh, um, uh, oh, uh, yeah. Quick thing from Steve V. He'll pick up a blacklist for sure. Smiley face. Okay. Thanks, we're going to keep you, we're going to, we're going <laughs> to hold you that, Steve. <laughs> no but thanks thanks for thanks for always uh picking stuff up from us we appreciate it and uh, again i mean loco's been here all all night um uh i love this cat 
Uh, he said, thanks so much, both of you today. Most appreciated, fun and informative. Thanks for sharing. It's lunchtime here in Oz. He's in Australia. Uh, I might have a fried chicken sandwich and watch Death Valley. Uh, I'll think of you when I take my first bite. And I can't think that's probably the best post I've read all night. Um, amazing. Um, thanks so much. And uh, oh, oh, quick follow up from Barrett. Uh, we're working on it. Happy holidays from both of us. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, that does it. That's about that. About does it. Um, I mean, unless you want to sit around and talk about set design for the next hour, but I know sure got... one quick little thing is we got to say the Tubi stuff. Oh, the Tubi stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's a Tubi yeah. stuff. Okay. Well, so we'll just say it real quick. We, yeah. We're taking up a lot of time here. Yeah. Perfect. So uh, as, as people may or may not know, uh, there's a service called Tubi and it's available in Canada. It's massive in the States, but uh, it's actually a free streaming platform. If no one's heard of it, you can actually download it on most uh, uh, like your, your gaming console, PS5, Xbox. You can actually uh, also on your smart TV on your phone, whatever on your computer. Uh, and uh, basically it's like a free Netflix. Um, they play ads. So you have to sit through some ads here and there, but they've got a great, great selection of films and a fan i mean spinsters of horror they're always touting tubi uh they've got a fantastic selection of horror i think there's over four thousand horror films on there uh including some of ours and uh right currently right now we've got the door as well as if a tree falls uh and we've recently just added horsehead and silent retreat so if you haven't checked out those films make sure you check them out on tubi and uh, coming up in 2022, we've also got another uh, batch of films that are going live on the platform, which include uh, Disco Path, uh, fan favorite. Uh, people love that movie. It's going to be available on Tubi uh, in the new year, as well as um, In the House of Flies, who is from, from Gabe Carrere. Uh, Gabriel Carrere, who directed uh, If a Tree Falls. So that film's going to be up. And also, last but not least, uh, your film, Mr. Archibald, Never Lost, is actually going to be debuting on the platform as well. And Ryan Barrett in that as well. Yes, absolutely. So, uh, and um, so that's, that's pretty cool because I mean, that's, that's kind of the first, was that the first black font film that you, I mean, it's the, f- that, that was the first film that I ever wrote and directed myself. Right, um, right. And it was something that was really special to me. Um, and I still, you know, I still love that movie. I mean, we went out, we really had no idea what we were doing, but it was the first time that anyone gave us, you know, 10 bucks to go make a movie. Um and, you know, it's it's kind of like a genre love story, uh, and it did great. You know, we went to Fantasia with it, and it won an audience award for Best Canadian Feature at Fantasia. Um, and it's funny because it's like, you know, like we mentioned before with distribution companies, you know, it got released, and then the, com- the company, you know, doesn't exist anymore, and the movie can't be, you can't find it anywhere anymore. So we were able to actually dig up um, with some help from uh, from some some people around the world, um, dig up a, a high quality file of it and uh, get it onto Tubi. So finally, people will be able to watch that film again. Awesome, uh, yeah, really excited for that. And if you haven't checked that movie out, when you hit when it hits Tubi, make sure you give it a watch. It is a fantastic uh, indie film that was made eleven years ago, I think, or twelve yeah. years ago, maybe. Yeah. Uh, and it, honestly, we've just watched the we had to watch the master video before it got sent in, and uh, it still holds up. So, I mean, I know Chad's a humble guy. He won't say this, but uh, I will on his behalf. And it's that, that it's a great, great film, uh, fantastic performances from all involved. And it'll be a great, uh, a great watch for a lot of people discovering it for the first time. So can't wait till that's up on Tubi, but Tubi, check it out. Canadian people out there, film fans or around the world, Tubi, 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 check it out. It'll save you some money and also a great selection of indie horror flicks as well as some other flicks in there too. So uh, make sure you give it a shot. Um, okay. Let's wrap things up. I know I said that three, like about 30 minutes ago, but um, uh, we're at, we're almost at the two hour mark. We, I got to let you go, but um, <laughs> just, uh, uh, just let everyone, just let everyone know. Um, of course, we've got uh, merchandise and movies available at the online store at Black Fawn Distro at blackfondistribution.com slash store new store launching early 2022 with some new blacklist packages and of course pre-orders for all the physical product that we actually announced that uh on tonight's program so make sure you keep your eye out for that and sign up for our mailing list if you go to our website right now sign up for our mailing list you'll get some exclusive codes and some promotional items as well as news uh, uh, quicker than than anyone else um in the new year um Chad, uh, of course, you've got a lot going on, but uh, what can you tell us about what you have coming up next uh, um, for yourself? And, uh, you know, how can people get in touch if they want to reach out? Yeah, I mean, um, uh, we're always looking to collaborate with more filmmakers. Um, That's something that we really want to do in the next uh, year or two is actually um, kind of use some of our resources as far as financing and and funding and um, 
bring some new filmmakers into the fold and really start kind of getting their visions and, and, and some new voices on the screen um, through Black Fun Films. Um, you know, it started as a production company that we were just, you know, we wanted to make movies, so we were doing stuff under it. Um, but it's really got to a point where it's grown and, um, you know, we're looking to do, to still direct for sure, me, myself and Cody Callahan. Um, but also on top of that, you know, we're really, really trying to kind of bring more filmmakers in and uh, more scripts in and more writers in and more teams in um, and really just um, continue sharing some, some, some really great stories around the world. Um, and then on top of that, I mean, you know, it's pretty easy to get a hold of me, chat at blackfondfilms.com. Um, you know, we're really accessible, always happy to jump on a Zoom call and have a coffee and chat about filmmaking. Um, but aside from all that, I do just want to say thank you to everyone out there who supported us for years and years and years and years. Um, you know, we're so grateful. We've, we've been a company that's been around that, uh, you know, started with nothing. And um, we get to make movies every day still because of the support of uh, so many people out there, not only the cast and crew, but uh, fans, um, people that, you know, buy our films, watch our films, um, go on social media, spread the word about us, about Black Fun Distro, about Black Fun Films. Um, we get to we get to do this stuff every day because of you guys. And, you know, we're, we're so, so thankful of that. We uh, will never forget it. And, um, you know, please continue. Um, spread the word about our projects, our films, you know, uh, you know, what you want to see, reach out to us and uh, yeah. Keep watching horror films. Perfect. Well, listen, uh, thanks again for everyone for tuning in tonight. Uh, just a quick rundown of what we've got coming out. I just wanted to make sure we didn't forget anything. We've got Vicious Fun Physical coming out in Canada on Black Fawn Distro. We've got Death Valley coming out on Physical on Black Fawn Distro in Canada uh, next year, as well as a VOD release of, of Death Valley. We've also got uh, the Tubi titles dropping early next year, Never Lost Disco Path, In the House of Flies. And currently you can check out Horsehead Silent Retreat if a tree falls in the door uh also physical release of hall coming in 2022 um that should be coming out early in the early in the year as well with a uh, with blacklists for any anything that has a physical release is going to get a blacklist uh package uh and of course uh some other vod releases we have coming up uh faking a murder uh five seven guys shout out to them uh thanks for all your support as well as well and we we just forgot to mention we should mention it just to wrap things up but peppergrass uh also coming out uh 2022 uh fantastic filmmaking team over there as well really great group of people and uh really stoked to uh really stoked to see uh to see those guys uh, um, um put out that film as well it just had a a great uh great premiere in toronto at blood and the Sh blood and snow film festival and we're excited to put it out under our umbrella as well so um before we go um please remember to follow chad archibald on instagram you can follow his personal account, Chad underscore Archibald, or you can follow him at Black Fawn Films. Uh, and of course, follow us at Black Fawn Distro. And if you need to know what the difference is, uh, you can definitely check out the top of this uh, episode and we will explain it to you. So, um, but again, um, Chad, stick around. Uh, I just want to chat after the fact, uh, after we get off the air, but um, for everyone else uh, tuning in, uh, thanks again for checking out Black Fawn Distribution's Takeover Tuesday or Black Fawn Distro's Takeover Tuesday. And uh, we hope to see you next time. Uh, we've got a whole slew of shows set up for early next year. Uh, we're going to keep we're going to keep the the thunder coming, as they say. And uh, there's lots of great guests um, coming uh, onto the program that are going to be talking about all things uh, movie related. So uh, if you've got a suggestion, drop us a line, takeover at blackfawndistribution.com. And again, uh, I'd like to thank our sponsors and our special guest tonight, Evan Marsh from Vicious Fun and Matthew Ninabur, a.k.a. Psycho Gorman from Death Valley. Uh, thanks go, thanks again to those guys for stopping in and making the time for the show tonight. Uh, but that's it. That's our Xmas episode. I can take off the yeah. Santa hat, which is basically uh, <laughs> my head is so hot right now because I've been wearing the Santa hat for like two <laughs> hours. Um, but uh, um, thanks, everyone, for tuning in. We hope you have a happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Ha happy Hanukkah. All that stuff. And a happy new year. Be safe out there. Um, and uh, hopefully you get to spend some time with your friends and families. And uh, make sure you stay healthy. And uh, hey. We'll get to the other side, 2022, right around the corner, and hopefully it's better than 2021. So until then, take care, guys. I'm Benner from Black Font Distro, and we'll see you soon. And that does it for another episode of Black Font Distro's Takeover Tuesday. Thanks for tuning in. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, please remember to like, follow, share, and subscribe, and help us spread the word about the program and our incredible guests. If you're interested in grabbing some more information about Black Fawn Distribution or want to check out our film titles and merchandise, you can find us online at blackfawndistribution.com. We'd also like to thank our sponsors. 
Wellington Brewery's Hellas Lager, Deadly Grounds Coffee, Twisted Teas, and of course, Black Fawn Distribution. Just a reminder, you can always catch Black Fawn Distro's Takeover Tuesday live on Facebook, YouTube, and our other social media platforms. Or pick up one of our retransmissions on any of the major streaming platforms. Until next time, I'm your host, Benner, from Black Fawn Distro, and we'll see you soon.